In this video, we're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem, probably one of the most famous theorems in all of mathematics. It was discovered several thousand years ago by a Greek mathematician named Pythagoras. And the Pythagorean theorem just says, in a right triangle with legs of length A and B and hypotenuse of length C, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, for a lot of people, when they think Pythagorean theorem, they just kind of think this equation here, this formula here. Uh, but before we uh, get talking about it, before we get to using this formula, it's important to note what the values A, B, and C actually refer to on the triangle. So here we have a right triangle. And the most important side in the right triangle is really this side here, which is the hypotenuse. And we're going to call this side C. So this is the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle in a triangle. Always opposite the right angle in a right triangle. It's also always the longest side. Now, the other two sides of the triangle, these are called the legs. And basically, the legs are just the two sides of the triangle that are not the hypotenuse. Okay? So anytime you have a right triangle, you label the legs A and B, and you label the hypotenuse C, there's always going to be this relationship between the two legs and the hypotenuse of a right triangle. That is the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So let's take a look at a couple of problems that we can solve that use the Pythagorean theorem. Example number one, I have a right triangle. I know the lengths of the two legs of the right triangle, and I'm looking for the length of the hypotenuse. Well, since I know that in any right triangle, the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. I know the values of the legs, so I can just plug those in. 5 squared plus 12 squared. My hypotenuse is x. So 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. And 25 plus 144 is 169. And from here, I want to take the square root of each side of my triangle so I can solve for x. So I have the square root of 169 equals the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 169. 169 is what we call a perfect square, meaning that it has a whole number as its square root, and we see that the value of x is 13, 13 meters in this case. Now let's take a look at example number two. Again, I have a right triangle. I know the lengths of two of the, the two legs of the right triangle. So once again, I can set up my equation using my Pythagorean theorem. So I have one squared plus one squared equals x squared. One squared is one, one squared is one. One plus one is two, so I have two equals x squared. I take the square root of each side. And again, I have x equals, I could just leave this as the square root of 2. Or if you want to punch that into your calculator and use the square root symbol, you'll see that you get x equals approximately 1.414. Now, example number 3. This is one where students often make mistakes. Notice that, again, I have a right triangle. And I know the lengths of two of the sides. Notice, however, one of the sides is the hypotenuse. Now, it's always important when you're using the Pythagorean theorem to remember the hypotenuse is the one side that goes by itself on one side of the equation. So for this equation, I want to set up 8 squared plus x squared, that is, the square of one leg plus the square of the other leg, equals 10 squared. Notice I do not want to set up the equation 8 squared plus 10 squared equals x squared. That would be incorrect. I want to make sure I have the hypotenuse by itself 
squared on one side of the equation. So now I can go about solving this equation. 8 squared is 64. 10 squared is 100. I need to subtract 64 from each side. That gives me x squared equals 36. And again, 36 is a perfect square. So when I take the square root of each side, I get x equals 6. Now let's take a look at a few word problems that use the Pythagorean theorem. Example number four says find a hypotenuse of a right triangle that has one side of five inches and another side of two inches. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to draw a picture. My picture is going to be the picture of a right triangle. And it says find the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I know I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So let me call that x. Has one side of five inches five inches, and the other side of two inches. Well, now this just looks like one of the examples that I did previously. I've got a right triangle. I know two of the sides, and I'm solving for the third side. So 5 squared plus 2 squared equals x squared. 25 plus 4 equals x squared. 29 equals x squared. And x equals the square root of 29 and the square root of 29, if you punch that into your calculator, you get approximately 5.38, and this would be inches. Example number five. A square measures six yards on one side. How long is the diagonal of the square? Well, let's see. If I draw a picture of a square, and it says it's six yards on a side. Well, since it's a square, I know that all four sides are congruent, so it's actually six yards, six yards, six yards, and six yards. And it asks me how long is the diagonal of the square? So we'll call that x. Well, that's kind of an interesting question because it looks like, you know, we were just talking about right triangles, and now all of a sudden we're talking about squares, but notice since squares have four right angles, in fact, I do have a right triangle here. It's right there. If I look at just this piece of my picture here, I've got a right triangle, and I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So once again, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. 6 squared plus 6 squared equals the square of the hypotenuse. So 36 plus 36 equals x squared. That's 72 equals x squared. I take the square root of each side, and I get x equals approximately 8.4 yards. Example number six. A pole is 10 feet high. So let me draw my pole here. Pole is 10 feet high. A wire is attached to the top of the pole and fastened to an anchor in the ground. The anchor is five feet from the bottom of the pole. So I have a wire attached to the top of the pole. It's going to be, let me draw the ground down here. It's going to be fastened to an anchor five feet from the bottom of the pole. So here's the bottom of the pole. My anchor is five feet away. So this distance here is five feet. What is the length of the wire? So I'm looking for this distance right here, the length of the wire. So let me call that x. Now if I assume that my pole is in fact standing straight up, it's not crooked or leaning, well then I've got a right angle right here, and I've got a picture of a right triangle, which means again I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's see, 10 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared, 100 plus 25 equals x squared, 125 equals x squared, and x equals the square root of 125. And if you punch that into your calculator, you get x is approximately 11.18. And let's see, this is in feet.
Now you have a couple more examples in your notes. I want you to work through those on your own. Don't forget to draw the picture, and we will take a look at these tomorrow in class.